John chapter 10. When you're there, say amen. 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 All right, why don't we just read? Oh, is it going to fit? Okay, because the screen went down. So you have to pull it down a little bit. It says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know what? His voice. Yet they will not Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him. For they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he speak, spoke to them. Verse 7, Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and I will go in and out, and go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and to destroy. I have come that you may have life, and that you may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. Say, so he's a good shepherd. He's a good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep, but a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hirelings flee because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my own. Amen. 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 All, right. All right, praise God. Church, I want to talk to you. The title of my message today is Whose Voice Are You Listening To? Whose Voice are you listening to? Amen? Y'all got a Facebook. You know I was going to preach about this already. Amen? And the Bible says here that Jesus is, is, is telling a story. And one of the, the reason why we know it's a story is because he starts off in John chapter 9 telling parables and telling stories. And in John chapter 9, verse uh, 41, I don't have it on the screen, but just to kind of reference it, the Bible says that Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees. Say the religious. The religious. That's who the Pharisees are. They're the religious people. They're the ones that go to church every day, but they don't help nobody. Uh-oh. They're the ones that you see at Walmart, and you know they're a Christian, but they turn their, other, they turn their head like, the, like they're too good for you. Come on now, we know them people. Yeah. All right. We don't want to be that way. Amen? Somebody put on Facebook the other day about me and Pastor Jamie, and they were saying, uh, they were talking about somebody, complaining about someone, and they said on there, you know, these people, they go to church, and then they don't say hi to you when they see you in the store, and they says, but Pastor Jamie and Larry, they always say hi. I said, praise God. That's a good thing. Amen? At least I'm doing something right. Amen? And I says, that's what I want to be, church. We need to be a light. Amen? We need to love people where they are. Amen. Yeah. Even when they even when they hurt you, love them. Yes. Amen. Amen. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sins, Amen. and we learn that how to love church. We're walking in the power of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. You can yappity yap in tongues and all that kind of stuff, but if you don't have love, the Bible says you're nothing. That's right. Right. And that's the thing that we need. So the Bible says here that Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, and he begins to tell the Pharisees about a shepherd, a shepherd that takes care of the sheep. And that he goes before the sheep, and the sheep follow him. And, and that wherever the sheep go, they find pasture. They find peace. They find the things that they need, because why? He's a good shepherd. And he goes on to say, but then there's other ones that have come before him. He goes, and all they do is, is they're thieves, and they're robbers. And what they do is they lead the sheep astray. They, they cause them to go a way that the shepherd, the true shepherd, doesn't want them to go. How many of y'all know that scripture in John chapter, go back, Jamie, uh, to the next uh, previous screen. John chapter 10, verse 10, the very, very top. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. How many of y'all know that verse? Yeah. 
Amen. And we all quote that, right? Yeah. And we always say, that's the devil. Man, it's not the devil. I, heard, I hate to bust your bubble. It's not the devil. Did you re We read it in context. Who were the thieves and the robbers? The okay. ones that came a different way. Other than Christ. Who went before Jesus? The Pharisees. Okay. So you know what religious people do? They steal, kill, and destroy from you. Right. The first people to hurt you in the church are the religious ones. Yes. Amen. The ones that they're always going around judging everybody else, but they don't ever look at themselves. Yeah. Can I get a good amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They're the ones that are the sheep. <laughs> the, 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 the ones that the hirelings that steal, that kill from you, that destroy. The wolf there is the devil. Because he's the one that comes. There's what? There's a shepherd, there's the thieves and the robbers, and then there's the wolves. In church, you know what? It's very important that you, the Bible says that when the apostles, when they were preaching and they were on their way to be killed, you know, some of them, the Bible says that Peter was crucified upside down. And then when he was crucified upside down, he, he was chosen to be crucified that way because he didn't want to be, uh, he didn't feel worthy to be crucified the right way, like Jesus Christ was. He said, I don't want to be crucified like my master. The Bible doesn't say that, but the, the, uh, history says that. And the Bible says that as the apostles were preaching in the book of Acts, it says, Ismael, that they says, when we die, many grievous wolves, and, 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 and they're going to come and they're going to destroy the flock, and they're going to lead the flock away. Church, that's why there's a lot of deception out there. Yeah. Why? Because it's been happening since the Bible times. It's been happening since, the, since since they were walking the earth, since Jesus was walking the earth. Who was the ones that always contradicted Jesus? The Pharisees. Yeah, y'all learning class. The Pharisees ones. The religious ones. The Bible says that when Peter, the Bible says that Peter went into the synagogue. And the Bible says that he stood up before the church. And he preached about grace and everything that y'all y'all listen to in this church. And the Bible says that after he had left, you know what it says, Duran? It says that some of the other leaders stood up and they began to contradict what Paul has said. Don't be surprised when you leave here and people say, oh, I know what Pastor Larry is saying, but. Yeah. I know what Pastor Larry said, but. Did he read this scripture? I've read the Bible front end and front back. There's nothing I don't tell you that I haven't already considered most of the time. People think because I'm young that I don't know. I know more than you think I know. Amen. 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 Why? Because I because I gotta be a good shepherd for y'all. Do you know the Bible says the word pastor? Like when you say Pastor Larry, Pastor Jamie, if you look up that word pastor in the Greek, it's a shepherd. Amen. Amen. My job is to shepherd y'all. Yes. Pastor Jamie's job is to shepherd you, is to lead you, is to guide you. Do you know that shepherds are considered dumb? Now I'm not saying you're dumb, but I'm just saying. You know what they need? They need guidance. Some of you dumb because we make some dumb decisions. Amen? We've all been dumb in our lives. Amen? Man. You bought that big screen TV to watch your football game, but you knew you couldn't pay the bill on the bill. Yeah. <laughs> so you rent a rent center to rent it, and then rent a center rented it back, and they wasn't going to pick it up. Amen? We buy things, and we live above our means. Yes, ma'am. We make dumb decisions before thinking about some of the things that we really need, right? Man. We've all done that. I've done that too. We've all made stupid decisions, but thank God we have a shepherd that loves us. Amen. 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 What about the, what, think about you that are, maybe you're young right now and are ones that were young, the parents. You're older now, you have your kids, you're married. What about young decisions? When your mama used to say, that boy don't love you, it's love. He loves me, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Because he writes me letters and puts me on his Facebook. And yet the whole time, while you're at work, he's messing with your best friend. <laughs> but you don't care what anybody says, right? Because my, like my grandma says, love is blind sometimes. <laughs> you can't see. Yep. You, let, me, let me give you a good word of advice. Let people speak into your life who are from the outside. Not from the end. Because people that know you, people that are to involve with your life are people that don't always give you good judgment. But people that are outside, that can see. Because see, you're, they're not the one in the situation you are. 
So get somebody outside the situation because they're going to give you balance advice. Yeah. Listen to your pastor. I'm helping you really well right now. Yeah. And listen to those words. So the Bible says that these, these sheep, Jesus is telling them, you cannot come any other way but by me. It's by grace through faith. There's no other way. Amen? Yeah. It's not through fasting. It's not through Bible reading. It's not through even, uh oh coming to church. Your salvation is a gift from God. Yes. And it cannot be earned. It cannot be merited. It's not because you don't drink that you're going to be saved. Uh-oh. But Larry, my pastor, my, what the, the preacher on TV said that. But did you ever open your Bible and judge if what the preacher was telling you was right? Come on, church. Yeah. We'll get on that treadmill. Yeah. Have you seen, how many of y'all have seen the dog whisperer? The dog whisperer, he, he trains those dogs, right? Up. It was that because he had a little short fat dog, which reminds me of my grandma's dog, Chana. <laughs> you know, my grandma has a fat dog that just sleeps her life away. You know? <laughs> she sleeps in the air conditioner, and she's fat. I mean, she's a fat pug. And the doctors already told my grandma, the vets told my grandma, she is overweight. <laughs> and you know what he does? That, that, that uh, dog whisperer, he says that you're supposed to walk your dog and all that. And then he says that that uh, if, you don't have, if you don't have time to walk your dog, put the dog on the treadmill. <laughs> and so you know what he does first of all he ties the dog on the treadmill and the dog is walking on the treadmill but you ever notice the dog ain't going anywhere right it thinks it, it thinks it's gone for a walk but it ain't going nowhere see some of us are like that in our religious walk Come on. Ooh, glory. we think cause, ooh, I'm, I'm praying I'm going to church and really you're blind because you ain't moving an inch <laughs> and you think oh I know I'm on a journey for the Lord because because I'm going to church and praying every day. Well, that's good. But what are you praying for? Yeah. What's the reason why you pray? Do you pray because you think it gets brownie points with the Lord? No. You can't earn your salvation, church, is what I'm saying. You can't earn your blessing. Amen? Amen. Let me tell you something. You know, right now, there's on TV, they're, they're having a, what they call a praise-a-thon, Christian television. And they're begging for money. And they have preachers on there saying, sow a $5,000 seed and God's going to bless you and open your bank account. And people are writing checks yes. for $10,000. Church, you cannot buy a blessing. No. No. Either it's a gift or it's not. Right. Amen? Amen. So, and I've heard people say on there, you know what, sow a $5,000 seed and God's going God's to heal your body. Church, you're trying to buy a miracle. You cannot buy a miracle. It's a gift. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now think about what I'm going to say. Some of you have heard this, but some of you are visiting and new and maybe have never heard this. Is there anything you can do to get to, set, to, get to heaven besides receiving Jesus? No, no right? It's a gift. Yes. You can't, you know, your, 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 your great-grandma used to tell you, oh, mija, for all you Mexican people, mija, you need to accept Jesus. Right? And we tell people, there's nothing you can do to earn yourself. You, you, the only way you're going to get to heaven is if you start believing on the Lord Jesus. So you give your life to Jesus. And you know what they tell you, sister? Now you got to start doing A, B, and C, and D. Don't stop drinking. Stop going to clubs. Stop partying. Because if you don't stop doing those things, then you're going to go to hell and lose your salvation. Well, back up for a minute. I thought you said there was nothing I could do to earn my salvation. Right. Now you're telling me that if I do something wrong, I lose my salvation. You got, oh, Melissa's like, I don't oh. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Church, if there's nothing you could do to earn your salvation, then there's really nothing you can do to lose your salvation. Amen. Because it's by faith. Amen. Uh-oh. Yes. I know, I'm, I'm, I know I got y'all's mind are racing right now. Because you never heard this. But maybe today is the day that the Lord wants to set you free. Amen. Right. And look around the room, you that are visiting and don't know. A lot of y'all came from different churches that put you on a, on a, on a will on the, that what is it? What's the word? Treadmill. Treadmill. A performance, right? But when you started coming to New Covenant Church, they said, it's not by works. It's not by works, church. It is by grace through faith. Amen. And when you realize that, church, it does something to your heart. Yes. Because you know what? You, you don't, you stop doubting your salvation. I was preaching Thursday night. I, talked to, I was talking about the rapture Thursday. And I had said, how many of you, you grew up in church, and at church they would tell you what? You need to get right with Christ because Jesus could come any day. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, I was 
My sister can tell you, she, when we went to the same church, we grew up, they always talking about Jesus coming, right, Ashley? Jesus coming, any day, Jesus coming. And you don't want to be left behind, right? But Melissa, I told the church Thursday night when we were here Thursday, I says, I was a Christian, but you know what, Brother Jonathan? I was scared. Because I really thought I was going to miss the rapture. <laughs> you know why I thought I was going to miss the rapture, Lori? Because I was looking at, well, I don't do this. And, and I know the Lord wants me to start doing this more. And if I don't start doing this more, then I'm going to miss the rapture. You know why I wasn't secure in my salvation to make the rapture? Because I was looking at my own works. Right. That's it. Amen. But church, when you realize I'm ready for the rapture because it's not about what I do, it's about what he's already done. Yeah. Then, my Amen. friend, you've got a revelation that most Amen. people don't have. Amen. Right. Amen. Pastor Larry, are you saying we can live the way we want to? No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying you live a godly life not to be saved, but because you're already saved. Amen. Amen. That's the, That's see, the motive changes, sister. When we start living, and see, when we start living from that place of, I do it because I love him. Yes, it. Amen. Amen. I don't stop drinking because that's what I need to do in order to be saved. No, I, I put the bottle down because I want my life to glorify him. Amen. But let's just, paint it, let's, just, let's just be honest. Even if I pick up the bottle, technically it doesn't change my salvation because it's not based on works. Amen. Are y'all getting what I'm saying this Amen. morning? Amen. And so, so many times, church, we've allowed people to speak into our lives things like that that cause us to doubt our salvation. Right. Say, say this out loud with me that I, we said it Thursday. Say, Jesus, Jesus plus nothing, plus nothing equals, equals everything. Equals everything. Amen. Amen. What does it take to go to heaven? Jesus plus nothing. What does the nothing mean? You can't do anything. Amen. When I'm on my deathbed, unless Jesus comes by the time I die, but when I'm on my deathbed and people tell me, Larry, are you ready to go to heaven? I'm going to say I'm ready because he already made the way. Amen. Amen. But Larry, you didn't always do everything perfect. That's all right. It's not my work. It's his work. Amen. His work on the cross took care of it all. Let me tell you something. Melissa, if you, if, you know, you go to church and they tell you, you need to pray. You need to go to church. And if you make a sin or make a mistake, you need to ask God to forgive you and do all of these rituals, depending on what church you went to. And you know what? So let me ask you a question. Why did Jesus have to die? Yeah. If all you had to do was do all them works. Yes. Amen. Amen. Jesus could have just stood from heaven and said, go to church, pray, read your Bible, and I'll accept you into heaven. No, Jesus came and died on the cross because you and I could not earn our way yes. to heaven. Yes. But it was only through the shed blood of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. When you stand before the Lord and Jesus says, why should I let you into heaven? Your answer better be, because you made a way. Yes. Come on now. Yeah. And I remember because I was hard on myself when I was in church. Until one day I was sitting in my office, at my house, in my bedroom. And when I was sitting in my office, I've shared this story plenty of times, but I was reading the book of Galatians, Aunt Kathy, and the Lord began to reveal to me and say, all of this praying you do, all of this Bible reading you do, it don't mean nothing to me. And when the Lord said that to me, you know what he was doing, Crystal? He was yanking the rug from underneath me. Because little did I know, and deep down in my heart, there was some self-righteousness there. Yes. That said, that kind of made me want to flick my collar and say, I know I'm going to heaven because I don't go to dances. I know I don't go to I know I'm going to heaven because I don't listen to country music. Uh-oh. I know, I, I know I'm going to heaven because I don't go to the Pan American on Friday nights. Come on now. I'm not over there dropping it like it's hot, like everybody else is. Come on, for y'all younger generation. Let me help y'all out. I'm a young pastor. I'm only 30. Y'all get my point? Yeah. And then one day, I told the Lord, well, then why go to church? Why, why pray? Jesus said, that's the, that's the point, son. You're trying to earn your salvation. You don't think you are, but deep down in your heart, you're trying to earn your salvation. But when you realize it's none of you and all of me, 
it takes a different perspective. Amen. Amen. And then you know what, sister? I stopped beating myself when I didn't read my Bible. I stopped condemning myself when I would miss church every once in a while because I realized it's not my work. It's his work. Yes. And when I started realizing that more, Ashley, you know what I started doing? I started praying more. I started reading the Bible more. You know why? Because I realized I'm free. Yeah. I'm free from the burden of trying to do it on my own. Amen. Come on now. Yes. It's going to be a beautiful day when we're in heaven and you can eat all the enchiladas, pizza, and hamburgers you want Amen. and never lose your shape. Amen. Right? Amen. Man. <laughs> the other day my grandma came over and we were sitting in the living room and, and the candy jar was way across the kitchen table I mean the kitchen counter you know what I did John? I went to go grab the whole candy jar and set it right there in front of me and my grandma we ate almost ate half of the thing right there <laughs> together and, I, and, and I'm opening one after the other and I keep saying Grandma, I shouldn't be eating these candies and I, Grandma, I shouldn't be eating these candies and next time I have a big old pile of candies right there in front of me why? Because I know I need to lose weight. Right? But church, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a burden. Come on, let's be honest. Disciplining yourself to eat right is kind yes, of hard. Yes, amen. Especially when you have people like Jamie around you that can eat a whole cow and don't gain no weight. <laughs> you understand? When Jamie's uh, Whataburger hamburger is blowing my direction and I'm over here with my little green salad, it's hard. <laughs> God, because it takes discipline for me, right? But see, church, that's the way some of us are. So let me tell you, can I speak to some of y'all in here? Some of you, Mary said that some of you are carrying a burden. And I believe that those that came up here received it. But I should have spoke. Some of you have a burden of religion. And you're tired of church. Yeah. You wouldn't say it to the person next to you, but you're tired of church. You're tired of walking this walk. And you know why you're tired? Because you think you have to be on that treadmill performing Come on. and going and going and going. And it's, just stop. Just stop. And stop trying to earn something that Christ has freely forgive, Amen. given Amen. you. Amen. You don't have to praise God. You don't have to beg God for him to heal you. He has already healed you. Amen. All you have to do is believe it and receive it. Amen. Amen. A lady called me this week. She's trying to have a baby having fertility tests done and everything like that. And she called me and she said, Pastor Larry, and she started telling me her situation. She don't, she don't even live in this town, but she knows who I am personally. She said, Pastor Larry, I just need you to pray. Well, I called her back and I told her. This is what I told her. I said, I'm not your pastor, but just let me give you some advice. I said, don't ask God to give you a baby anymore. He got quiet on the phone. Don't ask God to give you a baby. Thank him that he's already given you the baby. Amen. Amen. And that's that it. it's like already that. on its way. Yes. Yes. Amen, somebody. Because yes. yes. you know what? We think that if we just beg hard enough and, and cry hard enough and, 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 and just yell hard enough in our prayer, and somehow God will say, okay, Jonathan, all right, you, you begged hard enough here. Here's your blessing. Church, come on now. My parents never did that to me when I was growing up. I didn't have to cry and say, oh, please feed me. Please give me something to eat. Please let me watch TV. No, y'all, my sister, well, my, my, please, Ashley, don't say nothing, but my sisters know I was a spoiled little brat. <laughs> <laughs> and, I would, and all I had to do was ask, and they would give it to me. Why? Because they loved me. Yeah. Right? That's the bottom line. Whether I was spoiled or not, the point is, is that if you be honest with yourself, my parents did it because they loved me. Amen. Church, if we would do that for our natural kids, how much more our Heavenly Father? Yes, amen. 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 See, some of you in this room, you don't know God as Father. I mean, as, yeah, as a Father. You know Him as a taskmaster. Yeah, good. I'm, I'm going to tell you what I mean. A taskmaster is somebody that beats a servant when a servant is disobedient. A taskmaster is somebody that tells a taskmaster is somebody that tells their servant, do this and do that, and you better do it the way I want you to do it, because if you don't do it, I'm gonna spank you and beat you. Some of us know God like that. Because we feel like all he is is a dictator. 
that is wagging his finger at us saying, you better pray, you better go to church. And the reason why you're in that hole is because this and this and this and this. When you don't see God as a loving father that loves you in spite of your yes. failure, yeah. that wants to embrace you yes. and hold you and cherish you and say, you know what? You don't have to carry the load. Let me carry the load. Amen. 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 Now, the Bible says that I want you to notice in verse 3. It says in verse 3, in verse 4, and in verse 5, you hear the phrases, the sheep hear his voice. The sheep know his voice. Do y'all see that? Look at it again. Verses 3. Read it real quick in your own head. Look at verse 4. And then look at verse 5. Do y'all see the, the hear? They hear his voice. They know his voice. Whose voice are you listening to, church? Let me tell you something. We live in a, in a world today that there's so many things that are flooding our ears. How many of y'all got to watch the presidential debate? Oh, no. Oh, Lord. I was laughing. It was like a comedy show. <laughs> yes, it was. And what happens? You, you, you keep feeling, you know, you, you say you're going to vote for Trump, and then you go to work, and then your co-worker is saying, why Trump's evil? And then you start doubting yourself. Say, well, I don't know, maybe I should vote for Hillary. And then you go around other friends, and they're saying, well, Hillary's bad, you need to vote for Trump. And then you're like, okay, well, I really don't know no more. <laughs> right? Why? Because everybody's flooding your mind with everything. And church, whether you know it or not, everywhere you go, something is flooding your mind. Right. I'll give you an example. When you start listening to country music, you start getting sad. Because all they talk about is the spouse leaving you for another man and they're drinking their life away. <laughs> right? That's true. <laughs> I'm not all country songs, but I'm just trying to pay most of them are. Yeah. And you know what? You start getting sad. And you, you start getting sad for no reason. Your marriage is happy. But you know why you start getting sad? Because the music does something to you. That's true. Think about what I'm saying. Music is a powerful thing. Yes, it is. It stirs up emotions. It, it, it can get you joyful. It can get you sad. Yes. So can praise and worship music. Yes. It can. You know. Well, you know what praise and worship music can do? It can wash away fears. Yes. yes. It can wash away doubt. Yes. That's why you gotta learn to be a worshiper. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're not singing so brother Edward can come up here and sing. Right. We're singing so that we can let God wash away them burdens yes. as we get into His presence through singing. Amen. Amen? Yeah. I'm reading through the Book of Psalms right now in my own time. Because I told you, I, I'm trying to read through the whole Bible by December. And I'm doing good. Praise God. I, I'm halfway there. And so I've been reading through the book of Psalms. And I noticed that every, something I had never noticed before, that David would list a problem, and then he'd start singing. Yes. He'd list a problem, and then he'd start singing. You know why? Because praise always relieved David of the stress that he was in. Amen. When are we going to learn that, church? Learn to be a worshiper. You see, church... The problem with listening to the wrong voice gets you in trouble. Yes, yes. You know how I know that? Because we're in sin and we're in sickness because Adam and Eve listened to the wrong voice. Yes. The voice of who? The serpent. serpent. The serpent whispered in their ear and says, if you eat this fruit, you'll be more like God. Mm -hmm. When the reality is they were already like God. Yes. yes. You know that true, that the Bible says that that tree was the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil. You know what it represents? The law. Because you're going to church and the pastor's telling you, pray more, fast more, love more, stop stop lying, stop going to these places and you'll be more like God. When the truth is you're already like God Amen. because you've been born again. Amen. Are y'all with me? Yes. And so we eat it, we listen to the voice of the enemy. And we're in that we're and we all are in sin. Babies are born sick because they're born in a sinful world. How many sins does it take to be a sinner? Think about what I'm going to say. How many sins does it take for God to mark you as a sinner? It takes none. Because the Bible says in Romans we're all born in sin. Okay, think about what I'm saying. It took You didn't do anything to be a sinner. You were born into a sinner. It's not, listen to me, it's not, some of y'all need to hear this. It's not really technically true to say babies are born innocent. That's not really biblical. 
Babies are born innocent in the sense that they don't know what sin is. But babies are born in sin. Yes. That's why they're born deformed. That's why, they're I, like me, I was born with a disability. Why? Because I was born with the sin of Adam in my body that caused me to be physically sick. Are y'all understanding yes. this? Yes. So we're all born sinners. But what does the Bible say for us to be saved? It says to be born again. Yes. So if you were born a sinner, then you're born into the relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. And nothing can change that bloodline. The moment you said yes to Jesus, come into my heart, the Bible says you were born again. Amen. And you know what Jesus did? Jesus took you out of Adam and he placed you into Jesus Christ. Amen. And whatever Jesus Christ had, you have. So you, God no longer sees you as a sinner. He sees you as righteous and holy and blameless. The Bible even goes as far to say that he even sees us without sin. Yes. Why? Because we're in Christ now. Amen. Did you do anything to deserve it? No. no. All you did is what? Believe. Amen. Man, yes. this is That's free. Good. Amen. Amen. It's liberating. Amen. And so, church, we have so many voices that come into our hearts. In our minds. And I just want to talk about a few for a few minutes. Amen. I could go around this room right now and every one of y'all can tell me different voices and emotions that speak to your life. But I just want to list a few that the Lord gave me. Number one, stop listening to voices of discouragement. Stop listening to voices of discouragement. Go to Numbers. Numbers 12, 26 through 33, it says, Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran of, at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told him and said, We went into the land where you sent us. It, is truly, it truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Achan there. The Amalekites dwelt in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwelt in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwelt by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are are well able to overcome it. But the man, listen, but the man who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report for the land which they had spied out saying, the land though uh, through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitations. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great statue. There we saw the giants. The descendants of Achan came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so are we in their sight. How many of y'all know this story? The Bible says that the children of Israel, they came out of Egypt. They were on the banks. And they were about to go into the promised land. And the Bible says that Moses says, hmm, let's try something here. Moses goes, y'all give me 12, 12 people. And I'm going to send y'all into the land that God wants to give us. Now remember, the land that God was going to send Israel into already had enemies in it. So the Bible says that they went into the land and they brought back fruit. And they said, Moses, the land is beautiful. And, and the land is this. And Moses, if, the, if you read on, the Bible says that Jacob, I mean Joshua and Caleb brought back a good report. And you know what they say, Kathy? They says, we can take the land. Listen to me. Two out of the twelve said that we could take the land. The others, the other spies that went in with uh, Joshua and Caleb said, we can't take the land. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that the children of Israel began to weep and cry before the Lord. And they started listening to the negative voices. Some of you are discouraged in your life because you're listening to voices and people that tell you it's never going to get better. You're believing for your marriage, and your friends are telling you, girl, he ain't never going to change. He's always going to be that no good, dirty dog he's always been. That woman ain't never going to change. All she wants is your pocketbook. 
Come on. And you know what they do? They discourage you. Uh, you know, you know, you're believing God for a miracle. And you know the doctor's giving you a bad report. And you're believing the doctor. And you're believing God. And you know what people tell you? Now, I know you're a woman of faith now. But come on, you got to be real and listen to what the doctor's saying. People, when, when people tell me that, I want to slap them. You know why? Because what's more realer than the Word of God, Lori? Right. There's nothing that more realer than that. I don't care what the doctor says. The Bible says, whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Amen. And the report says, you're well. You're blessed. You're able to take the land. The situation that you're going through, listen to me, the situation that each and every one of you may be facing in your life you can overcome that situation if you will stop listening to people that try to discourage you. Amen. Now, I was getting dressed this morning, and the Lord brought the scripture back to my mind. And the Lord said to me this morning, whose voices were they listening to? And I says, the people of Israel. He says, whose voice were they listening to? And I, and I was wrestling with what the Lord was trying to tell me, and it dawned on me. You know who they were listening to? Their families. Right. You know the first people to discourage yes. your sister yes. is the closest ones to you. Yes. They don't see faith. Amen. They don't see that you're a Christian. You know what they see? That you're a hypocrite. Yes. Right. That's it. Come on now. That's good. And you know what you got to learn to do, Melissa? Weed out some of them people. Yes, right. Because all of Israel was a family because they all came from uh, from Israel, from Jacob. They were twelve brothers. Two of the brothers said, we can take the land. The other ten brothers said, we ain't taking no land. There's giants. And let me tell you something. It's hard to listen to the voice of God and to discern his voice when you have other ones closest to you pushing you down. Because yeah. let me tell you something. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be real with some of y'all. The first people that believed in me for a church were not even my own family. It was people in Mary who weren't even family to me that believed in me before my own family did. You know what my family said? Oh, mijo, that's a good dream. <laughs> but they never encouraged the dream. They never supported the dream. Come on, let's, I'll be real with y'all. But I didn't listen to the naysayers. I had a vision, and I was going somewhere. Amen. And I had people around me who weren't blood kin, but they were family to me. And you know what they spoke to me? Life. Saying, you can take the land. You can do what God's called you to do. And you know what? I didn't care what anybody said. And church, that's why we're here today. Amen. You know why? Because you listen to the right voice. Amen. Not the voices of discouragement. Not the voices of fear. Let me tell you something. Sometimes we have more faith in bad news than in good news. That's true. Some of you don't care about good news. Some of you, bad news is more real than good news. And church, you know what? We have to learn to close our ears to those negative things in our life that are sucking the life out of us. So, I'm going to rebuke some of y'all right now. Y'all ain't going to like it, but let me tell you the truth. Some of you need to learn to shut up and stop talking so much. And start listening to the Lord to give you the answers that you need. Amen. Because when some of you are so, like in a tornado. Have you, you ever seen a tornado? How many of y'all seen that movie Twister? And it takes the building, right? I mean, it just swirls it and it swirls. I mean, that house is just, I mean, it's being tore up. Some of you are in a whirlwind of your own emotions. Your husband's complaining. Your kids are acting foolish. You have to pay your bills because nobody helps you. Your house is falling apart. You don't even know if you can afford that new car you wanted, but you wanted it. You got laid off at your job. They cut your hours at work. Come on now, church. Yeah. And you know what? You're so busy trying to fix your problem that you don't know how to stop and relax and listen to what God is trying to say to you. Amen, somebody. Amen. And let me let, listen to what I'm telling you. I'm not saying sit outside in a quiet and drink a cup of coffee and listen. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying to you is this, Melissa. You can be working and there be peace inside. 
because there's a voice that you're listening to from within. Man. You can be taking care of your bills and listen to the voice of God inside. Y'all with me? Yeah. Quietness in spirit does not mean laziness. No. I'm going to say it again. Quietness in spirit does not mean laziness. But to be quiet in your spirit is to have peace in the midst of the storm. Yeah. 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 And some of you are so caught up in the storm mentally that you're not quiet and listen to the voice of the Lord. The number one thing you could do right now is to start coming to church more often. And let me wash your feet. Amen. That's good. You want me to take my shoes off, Pastor Larry? No. I'm talking spiritually. That's right. Amen. Let me wash your feet from the dust that gets on your feet out there. Somebody, I want you to extend your feet forward. Just lift them up a little bit. And say, Pastor, yes. wash my feet. Wash my feet. That's it. That's my job, is to wash your feet. You know why? Because as you're walking through life out there, your feet get dirty. Things start boggling. Your, your finances, your family, things start getting on you. And you know what you need? You just need a cleansing. Amen. And when you come to church, you get cleansed. You get washed. That's why for me, when I, when I left my religious church and I started going to Joe Osteen's church, I left refreshed every Sunday. Because it was such a cleansing for me. Because I felt toxic in my spirit. And that's why I thank God that, you know, people say, I don't like Joel Osteen. Well, I don't know if you, you may need to listen to him more often. Because <laughs> some of you are so polluted by religion, anything positive doesn't move you. If somebody's not slapping you, the preacher's not slapping you and telling you how bad you are, you don't feel it was a good message. There's people like that. Oh, pastor preached good. Why did the pastor preach good? Girl, because he was talking about how people need to quit sleeping around and smoking weed. And that is not positive news, sister. That's bad news. The gospel is good news, church. Amen. And people say things like, y'all's church is a feel-good church. And we get to feel good. The Bible says it's good news Amen. that sets people free. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. And when you hear good news, it washes you. Yes. And it cleanses your mind. Amen. And that's what some of you need. Some of you need to learn to ignore them phone calls. When people want to throw their problems on you. The other day, my grandma can tell you. And Pastor Jamie can tell you. Pastor Jamie, tell them I'm lying. I started crying the other day. Just crying, Mary. And Jamie said, what's wrong with you? I said, I'm tired. I told Brother Edward, too, the other day. I think Brother Edward came for a little bit, and I was crying to Brother I said, I'm tired. He's tired? What do you mean tired? I said, I'm mentally tired. Being a pastor is a heavy work. Yes, it is. Amen. And all those pastors that have gone before me, I applaud them more than I ever have. Because y'all don't know the, the problems that I have to hear and the things that I have to deal with. The phone calls. When you call me, I'm not saying don't call me. I want you to call me when you're going through things. But it becomes emotionally heavy for me, Hopi. Because when you love people and they're hurting, yes, you know, we want to do everything you can, right. Kathy, to help them. Mm -hmm. And there's some people that I can't help because they don't want to get up and do what I'm asking them to do. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. The other day I was listening to Joseph Prince. Do you know Joseph Prince? He preaches grace. And the other day he was saying, and it blessed me, Lori, I was crying watching TV. Because some of y'all don't understand the pastor's heart. And he said this. He says, some of you say, don't listen to the voice of critics. Don't listen to what people say, Pastor Prince. And he says, you don't understand what it feels like until you're a pastor. And your heart is tied to the church. Man, when he said that, I says, that's the answer I need. Because some of y'all can say, don't worry about what people say. You don't know what it's like. Because you're not a pastor. Right. Amen. You're not the one that carries it. I carry it. Mm -hmm. Jamie carries it. To get the vision out there. To share the word, church. But you know what's been a strength for me, Brother Edward, is my morning prayer. Is to get up and get in his presence. And let him wash all that negativity away. And when I learned to do that, I said, you know what? It's going to work out. God's going to fix it. 
And I told Jamie the other day, Jamie was feeling pressure the other day. We had a good talk. And he just started talking about how he felt pressure. And I just began to encourage him with what I said. And I said, Pastor Jamie, I said, you just have to learn that under pressure is when you thrive. Because truly pressure, sometimes it keeps you on your knees. Yes, it does. Before the Lord. Amen. And some of you, as long as everything's going, there's a scripture, Hopi, that I was reading this week in Psalms chapter 7, I believe. And it says, the prideful people, they don't see their need for the Lord. Yes, that's true. And some of us, when all things are going good and our bills are getting paid, Pastor, I'll be at church maybe in a month. But when your life starts going haywire, you know where you're at? You're the first one in church at every prayer meeting. Don't wait for that. Have yourself together. So when the storm comes, you can stand. Amen? Amen. Now, what about other voices we listen to? Voices of compromise. Uh-oh. Voices of compromise. Go to 1 Samuel. Now, don't put it on the screen yet, Pastor Jamie. Let me see. How many of y'all know that I talked about Saul last week? How many of y'all know that Saul, I said last week, that Saul disobeyed the Lord twice? And the last time, Desiree, that he disobeyed the Lord, the Bible says he was supposed to fight the Amalekites. He goes, you're going to fight the Amalekites. And, and, and the Bible says that Samuel the prophet went to King Saul and told him, go and fight, but destroy all the Amalekites, their children, their herd, destroy it all. Don't bring anything back, the Bible says to Israel. But you know what Saul did? Saul brought back the good animals. Because in his mind, he was going to give a burnt offering to the Lord. And you know what the Bible says, Kathy? The Bible says that when Samuel came to Saul, he rebuked King Saul. And he told King Saul, you disobeyed the Lord. Why did you bring back these animals? Because I'm going to give them as a sacrifice. That is not what the Lord told you. The Lord told you to destroy everything. And you kept them. And the Bible says that Saul began to give a reason for why he disobeyed the Lord. And I'm going to show it to you. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 24. Look what it says. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Did you see that? Yeah. Why did Saul disobey the Lord? Because he listened to the voice of the people. Church, listen to me. Don't allow anyone to cause you to compromise your morality and your godly standards. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Don't let a boy that says, just let me touch you. Just, let's just kiss. And then you start kissing. And then there's some tongue action in there. And then it gets one thing, and then he starts touching your leg. And then he starts getting too close. You know what they're doing? They're going to start causing you to compromise your standards. Amen. And you have to be careful. You know why? Because the Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Pastor Larry, how do I fight lust? All you younger ones, you know how you fight lust? The Bible says flee lust. You're not supposed to fight lust. You're supposed to flee from lust. That's it. When Joseph... When Potiphar, I believe it was Potiphar's wife, right? Tried to sleep with Joseph. What does the Bible say? Joseph fled and he left. He didn't try to say, oh, I know my girlfriend's full of lust, but I'm just going to try to fight it. You can't fight it, brother. Flee. Let me tell you something. Put your hand over your heart right now. And say, I'm going to listen to my instinct. My instinct. That's it, church. Listen to that voice. Because it will be the voice of the Lord. Amen. Don't compromise your standards. Listen to the voice of the Lord. Don't listen to people that tell you, oh, just have a few drinks. And then you get drunk. And you get wasted. You compromise your standards when you know that's not what the Lord wants you to do. Don't compromise your standards. Stand for something. 
Because if you don't stand for anything, you'll fall for everything. Amen. The Bible says that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah, that's some real names. One, one person says Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But no, that ain't it. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the Bible says that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the Bible says that they were in Nebuchadnezzar's hall. And that Nebuchadnezzar wanted them to bow before the image he had created. And the Bible says that one of, one of Nebuchadnezzar's servants said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't bow before the image that you made. And Nebuchadnezzar said, really? And he said, yes. He goes, bring them into my chambers. I want to speak to them. And the Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar said, I see that y'all don't serve the Lord that I serve. And they said, yes, sir, we don't serve your Lord. Our Lord is Jehovah. And you know what he said? He says, next time you hear the instruments, I want you to bow down to my God. Because if you don't bow down to my God, I'm going to throw you in the fiery furnace. And look at what the Bible says in Daniel chapter 3. i got to hurry. I'm, I'm out of time. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 through 19. I mean, 18. Look what it says. Daniel chapter 3, 16 through 18. It says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this manner. If this is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the golden image which you have set up. Nebuch uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not listen to the voice of compromise. They didn't care that their life was on the line. We are not going to compromise our standards. Parents, do you compromise your standard in your home for your children? I know parents, not in this church, but I know parents that let their kids smoke weed in their home. And then they're calling me and wanting me to pray. You don't need me to pray. You need to stop compromising your standards. Amen. Oh, that sounds hard, but it's the truth. Amen. You're not called to be a friend. You're called to be a parent, church. Amen. And you got to have God in your home. Man. And in your standard. And, and, and make it represent something. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. I, Thursday, I said it Thursday. Nobody nobody has come to my house and drink. Somebody wanted to come to my house when we first moved in. They said, Pastor Larry, they want to know if they can come to your house, but they're going to bring beer. I said, no, they cannot. Why? Me and Jamie have a standard in our home. And we won't compromise it. Now, I'm not saying you need to be as, as hard as I am, but you need to be you need to be something. Get a backbone in you. Amen? Amen. When your boss tells you, I'm, you need to work on Sundays. No, before I started this job, I told you I wanted Sundays off. So I could be in church. Some people, we, some of y'all let people run all over you. And then you wonder why you're an emotional wreck. Because you compromise. But when you stand your ground, and say, oh, no, we will not be moved. We're going to do what God wants us to do. It's going to be all right. Amen. Amen. Now, one more. The Bible says that we listen to the voices of accusation. Voices of accusation. Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 11. Real quick, it says, War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was their place found for him in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, and the serpent, the, the old serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a voice, a loud voice, saying in heaven, "Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ have come. For the accuser of the brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, I'm trying to read fast for time, has been cast down." And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives till death. I believe that this has already been fulfilled. I'm just letting y'all know. I believe that most of the book of Revelations has been fulfilled. But that's for a different time. You want to learn more about that? Come on Thursdays. Amen? But the devil has already been cast out. But notice what the Bible says, that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Stop listening to voices that always fall and fight, always fall, find fault with you. No matter how, you know, 
Let me speak to husband and wives for a minute. Stop beating each other for mistakes that they do. They're calling for lunch already. Y'all out yet? <laughs> learn, learn to stop always throwing that voice of accusation. Stop accusing your loved ones. If you say you're going to forgive, forgive. Amen. You're not going to forget, but you forgive and you let it go. And you don't mention it. That Jesus on the main line. Because <laughs> I want to speak to you personally. <laughs> you are, <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. We listen to the devil. How many of y'all read the book of Job? Ever read the book of Job? Job's friends, Job's friends told him, you're in the situation you're in because you were disobedient to yes. the Lord. Yeah. And you and you know what? God, God's done all this to you because you've been disobedient. And if you read the, the very end of the book of Job, the Bible says that God rebuked Job. And his friends, and told them, "Don't be blaming me for something I didn't have nothing to do with." Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, my friends, your friends will do that to you. Mm -hmm. They'll start accusing you. And let me tell you something. Hear me, everybody. Look at me and listen to me. Even when somebody in your life makes a mistake of their own, and it is their fault, you can correct them and tell them, but don't beat it over their head. Day in and day in. Say what you got to say. Move on and help them fix it. Amen. And make it better. Amen, somebody. Amen. That needs to be our life. I don't have time to finish this message, but I want to say something at the very end of my message. I'm going to read something to you that happened in World War I. And I close with this. During, the world, during World War I, some Turkish soldiers tried to steal a flock of sheep from a, a hillside near Jerusalem. The shepherd, listen, the shepherd who had been sleeping awoke to find his flock being driven off. He couldn't recapture them by force. So he called out to his flock with his distinctive call. The sheep listened and returned to their rightful owner. The soldiers couldn't stop the sheep from returning to the voice of their shepherd. Wow. God, that blessed me when I read that. You know, that's us. We get led astray yes. by different voices that come against us. And you know what, Kathy? Even when you venture off and you hear the Lord calling you back, thank God He always calls us back yes. to that place that we need to be in Him. Stop listening to the voices around you. Let me close with this. I'm, gonna list, I'm not going to read the scriptures to you, but I'm just going to say it real quick. You know Give me five minutes? Yes. Five minutes, real quick. How do you discern the voice of the Lord? I was going to give you all this, but I can't be happening too much at the beginning. Number one, you want, to have, you want to listen to the voice of the Lord? Get in the Word. Amen. Start reading His Word. I have scripture, but I'm not going to give it to you. Just hear what I'm saying. Listen to the Word. The next one I would tell you to do is listen to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit dwells within each and every one of us. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. Amen. Hopey, when you don't know what to do, sometimes you don't have time to pick up your Bible. Listen to the Holy Spirit within. And he'll tell you what you need to do. Now listen to me, because I'm going to help some of y'all right now. If somebody says, God showed them this, Duran, they say, Duran, God showed me this. And you know it contradicts what the Bible said, do not, not listen to that. Right. Because the final authority on all things is the scriptures. Yes. Are you with me? If somebody says, the Lord showed me that you're nothing but a dirty sinner and all that, and, but, you, you, but the Bible says, God's not in the condemning business. No. You know what voice that is? The enemy. enemy. Don't listen to it. Are y'all with me? I'm, I'm, you know why I'm telling y'all that? Because you watch TV and there's people saying that God showed them that this is the end of the world and all of these things. I'm going to step on some of y'all's toes right now. You're not going to like me, but hold on to your seatbelt. The movies. How many of y'all watched that movie, Heaven is for Real? Or Heaven is Real? Mm -hmm. Do you know that that movie is not biblically accurate? It actually contradicts the Bible. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. It got real quiet. You see, Grandma? <laughs> I had it too. It contradicts. But he had a vision. It don't matter what vision they have. If it contradicts the scripture, it's not of God. Is that all right with everybody? But he's a little boy. It don't matter. 
The Bible says don't be laid away, don't be led away by your own imaginations. And sometimes, church, we imagine things that we've been taught all our life. Are y'all with me? So don't be deceived by things. When you watch, listen to your pastor. Can I give y'all a word of advice? Watch Christian movies, but be careful by the things that they say, because not everything is biblically accurate. And at the end of the day, you're not gonna. St God's not gonna open that book or that movie, Heaven Is For Real, and says, "Did you believe everything this movie said?" No. No. He's gonna open the Bible and say, "Did you believe what this book said?" Are y'all with me? And you know what happens, sister, is when we watch movies like that and they're not biblically right, it it creates a a security that's not real. And you start believing things that are not even real. Are you with me? I was told in the movie that he said that there was going to be a war because the book of Revelation says, yet most people, yet most Bible scholars believe that the book of Revelation was already fulfilled. Now, are you going to believe? Jesus said that the end of the world would happen on that generation. Yet, I was, I was told that that little boy said that there's fixing to be a great war. That he had a vision in heaven that God told him there was going to be a great war. Now let me ask you a question. If Jesus said it already happened and the little boy said that God told him it's going to happen, what are you going to believe? The scriptures. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I'm not trying to put the little boy down. I'm just saying build your life on the word yeah. and not on what people tell you. Amen. So when you don't, so when people say the Holy Spirit said this to them, go back to the word. And I'm going to say this. The Holy Spirit, listen, the Holy Spirit will never tell you something that contradicts your word. That's right. I heard some, I've heard several people, and my grandma's a witness, and other people can tell you, I've heard preachers and, and, and people that love God say, God told me to leave my wife and marry this other one. No. God will not tell you that. Because no. that contradicts scripture. No. God is not for divorce. Amen. God is for marriage. He allows divorce, but it's not his perfect will. You understand? I'm not saying you can't get divorced. I'm just saying that that's not really what he wants. He would like for you to work it out. But he allows it, the Bible says. But God will never tell you to drop your wife and get you another one. Drop your husband and get you another one. God is not going to tell you that, church. You go back to the word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, can we stand?